I have collected a lot of video games over the years. I started playing them when I was like three or four years old. Like I, I really mean it. I, I have collected a lot and this plus what I just showed you is not even like half of it. But out of any video game I've ever played in my entire life, Rise of Kingdoms is by far the one that I've played for the longest period of time and also the one that I've spent the most hours enjoying cumulatively and objectively. And it's not even close. So today we're going to talk about why I've spent the last six years playing Rise of Kingdoms almost every single day. I have 2,150. 44 consecutive login days and spoiler alert I don't see myself stopping anytime soon however before we get into all of that what's going on guys cheers now, the other day I made a video talking about is rise of kingdoms worth playing in 2024 and I actually enjoyed that video man making that video because I got to talk passionately about the game in a positive light and touch on things that I really like about the game and that was a breath of fresh air because a lot of times we get lost in the sauce okay especially on YouTube we focus on like well it's easy to focus on negativity it gets clicks and it, it's just it is what it is and so it's going to be nice to follow that video up by talking about why I have played rise of kingdoms for the last six years and if you did watch that first video if you haven't I recommend it but you'll know that my start date was October 25th 2018 and according to Google that was 2182 days ago and in those 2182 days I've logged in 2144 of them which which means I've skipped 38 days in the last six years. So I've logged in for like 28 out of 30 days in every month for the last six years. It's actually even more often than that. I've only missed on average 1.8 days a month. But anyway, the point is my enjoyment for Rise of Kingdoms is teetering on the edge of addiction. And I'm totally fine with that. I'm really enjoying the game so much so that I started making YouTube videos for it. And now I'm a partner and creator. And to an extent, a lot of my life has revolved around this game for the past few years. And so with all of that out of the way to set the backstory and so that way you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from, the first thing that I want to touch on here on why I've been playing this game so consistently for so many years now six years to be exact is well, one is for the community and for those of you guys who don't know I've told this story before but I started playing rise of kingdoms with do literally dozens of co-workers I used to work at Apple and I remember going into the break room one day in October in 2018 and so many people were huddled around in little groups and they were all playing this game that had recently come out called rise of kingdoms actually back then it was called rise of civilizations and all these co-workers were they jumped into the game and they were building up their city and they were all playing on the same server in the same alliance there was literally probably like 20 to 30 of us that started playing all around the same time and at that time I was playing clash royale pretty regularly but I felt like I was missing out I had FOMO it's like what wait a minute what's everybody playing like I'm playing a game on my phone too but what, what are you guys playing so I remember downloading it after finding out what game it was and I played myself for like a week or so and I remember one of my co-workers Davis uh I think this was, this was around the time that the iPhone 11 came out no it was the iPhone 10 s it was the iphone 10s oh my god i feel so old that that was in 2018 but i remember he saw that i was playing rise of kingdoms in the break room and i he wondered why i wasn't playing in their alliance because i was kind of just like playing off on the side so I created a new account in their server. I think it was server 1062 and we all played together for literally months. And I remember our first ever Ark of Osiris. It was like the first time that Ark of Osiris came out. Like it was a new game mode and it was the first time that it was coming to our kingdom. And I remember that all of us from work met up at a German bar. It's no longer there we met up at a German bar I think it was a German bar across the street from work after work and we scheduled the, the Ark of Osiris time and we had this long table I wish I had pictures I wonder if any of them have pictures but we had this long table where we all sat around and we all played Ark of Osiris for the first time together in person and it was awesome and I was like immediately hooked on the game and the sense of community that I felt with people that I knew in real life it was awesome it was like it was unlike any other game that I had ever played and over time 
uh some players i mean some people in real life got distracted they had things to do the progress in the game for them slowed down a little bit and they weren't as invested as as myself and some other people from work and slowly the numbers started to trickle but that didn't really matter because i was making friends in the game on top of the friends that i had in real life and for a while i still play the game alongside some of the other people from work i remember uh, i think ricardo was actually one of the people that played rise of kingdoms the long Longest. I think I think I might be the only one that still plays from that group but I remember talking about it occasionally with Adam at work and I think Juan was still hopping in and out and I remember Edison was playing for a while and I wonder if any of them are going to watch this video and like I don't know it's just so weird to think about how much time has changed since then but but as I got more and more invested in the game and as I unlocked tier five units I was a bit more hooked and at that point I was taking the game a bit more seriously eventually I did migrate out of my server and I followed my friend RK around and we're still playing to this day, which is actually hilarious. But the point is that community brought me into Rise of Kingdoms with people that I knew in real life. And as I played the game more and more, I started to find myself making new friends within the Rise of Kingdoms community. And I feel like the developers for Rise of Kingdoms have done a pretty good job at managing the community aspect of the game over these past few years. And I think that's important because MMO games like Rise of Kingdoms and like MMO RPGs, for example, they sort of live and die by their community, right? I mean, as a multiplayer PVP game, the accomplishments of its players kind of don't really mean anything if there's nobody there to witness it and if there's nobody there to fight against, right? And so the very first reason why I have been playing Rise of Kingdoms for six years is it started with community and it ends with community. And that's why this is the first thing I wanted to touch on. This second thing is collecting commanders. I, I don't know what it is, but having new commanders come into the game for me just scratches like this this deep itch within my subconscious like I just have to do it I need like I have commanders here that I have unlocked that I will just never use I will there's no use for them for them I don't need them I don't know why I summoned them I don't know why I went out of my way to get them like some of these are mightiest governor commanders that I've asked to unlock even though I won't use them it like makes no sense right it makes no sense but part of me just wants to collect these historical figures and part of me also loves the strategy aspect of wondering like maybe one day maybe one day there will be a synergy so insane that Ashurbanipal will be meta again in two years from now and I'll have him unlocked and I can instantly max him and feel really good about that and that has happened over the years with commanders like Alexander the Great for example like he was super good when he came out and he stayed meta for a while and then he fell off pretty hard and then he made a huge comeback when Liu Che was released because of the extra expertise here just finding that strategy with an older commander was super satisfying and now people still use Alexander the Great to this day and I would argue that he is a meta commander in the open field he performs super well and that love for collecting commanders and for kind of understanding the different strategy of all of the different skills for the commanders the different talent trees for all the commanders that's partially what led me to start making videos for this game in the first place which I will talk about later but just making that meaningful progress on my account and feeling good about making those investments is a big part of why I have been playing rise of kingdoms for six years I like to see who's the next historical figure are we ever going to get like Nobunaga for example are we ever going to get King Arthur are we ever going to get Baldwin are we at, like there's so many possibilities for rise of kingdoms because of the rich history of so many different cultures and countries that it's just exciting to see who's coming next you never really know and how well are they going to pair with existing historical figures and commanders and the strategies that you can make with them it feels great and then on top of that you have the equipment system right and making progress with your equipment feels really good as well and so basically what I'm saying is I I like the collecting aspect of rise of kingdoms a lot and how that collection pairs with the strategy component which brings me to my third reason why I've been playing rise of kingdoms for six years and that is the combat okay you can't have a collecting strategy components without also the combat component and i know that this is sunset canyon and we have a hilarious icon picture up here okay but i'm in home kingdom there's no action right now so i don't have any fights to show you guys but the combat for rise of kingdoms is really uh, th there's other games out there that have tried to emulate the combat for rise of kingdoms and i don't know what it is but for me 
the combat and rise of kingdoms is like this perfect blend of of simplicity but also feeling like there's enough there where you can make a meaningful change and impact in the game in the open field because you have that freedom to move your troops wherever you want but it's also simple enough to just crash all of your armies into the enemy and completely dominate them in in the open field right there's no you're not forced to like use ranged marches you're not forced to like manually activate skill shots or anything like that it's smooth it's simple you can control multiple armies with a few hotkeys on your computer and by the way the pc version of rise of kingdoms is so buttery smooth it is absolutely the way to play the game and then you have to to consider the rally and garrison meta in this game and there is like nothing more exciting than massive pass rallies that last for like hours on end it's just at one point kingdom 1568 the kingdom that i am in we actually at one point held the record for being a part of the longest rally garrison exchange ever i think it was nine hours back then like a single rally running for nine hours against a single garrison it was insane since then i think the record has been beaten a couple of different different times but my point is like those massive past battles and even fort battles in, in king's land like having dozens if not hundreds of players all online at one time and many of which are in a discord call together everyone having their microphones and communicating in real time like the, the mmo aspect of the open field fighting in rise of kingdoms in combination with the high stake high reward rally garrison exchanges it is incredibly fun and it is it's what keeps me coming back every time there's a kvk that comes around it's exciting i know it's exciting it's going to be exciting and it makes all of the strategizing and preparation feel worth it in the off season because because sometimes yes it can be a little bit boring yes you might be feeling a little bit burnt out from doing golden kingdom again right but you know that the materials you're going to get from golden kingdom could make or break your build when it comes to crafting the next kvk helmet that you need or something like that right and so there's always an incentive to do those things and and you feel like you're making that meaningful progress to performing well in the open field for big kvk fights and my fourth and final reason for why i've been playing rise of kingdoms for the past six years is you guys I love making content for rise of kingdoms. I like making content in general. I was making content on YouTube before this game came out one day, hopefully many, many, many years from now, I will continue to make content even after this game. But ever since my first rise of kingdoms video that I ever posted back at the beginning of 2020, I've just loved sharing my experience in this game with you guys that's like a big part of what keeps me going is that i like to update you guys on what i think is the current meta i like to update you guys on what i think would be the best strategy to upgrade your commanders and what order i would upgrade them in what order you should get your gear in and what gear pieces are important and which ones can you keep as epic or as you know blue you know like famously you can use the blue gatekeeper shield for a long time right like these little strategies and making videos about these things i find super fulfilling and i find super fun and also bouncing ideas ideas off the community and getting feedback right because I'm not I'm not right all the time I'm right often I'm, I'm I'm often right okay let's just be honest I'm not I'm not perfect though and so bouncing ideas off the community and then getting a comment really quick be like oh actually Omniarch you didn't think about this talent on this commander or you didn't think about this pairing why why wouldn't you test this commander pairing when doing a new commander release or something like that like that's part of the fun for me learning from you guys and then sort of feeding that information back and getting better each time and I gotta say I still get excited when I wake up in the morning and let's say it's six seven in the morning and I see that new information came out for a brand new commander I still get hyped six years later it's actually it's kind of embarrassing almost because I'm a grown man but I get excited about like a new commander release for rise of kingdoms because to me this is like a new this is like a new toy a new action figure that I get to play with that I get to collect and that I get to smash into my enemies in a few months when kvk comes around right so when you see me make a video talking about a new commander and getting excited that's like genuine excitement I'm really I'm I'm I look forward to new commander releases because it's just another strategy it's just another piece that I get to play with and fit into the army and fit into the arsenal that I've already built up over the past six years and sharing that excitement with you guys through videos is I, I mean that is a foundational component as to why I've still been playing rise of kingdoms six years later and just talking about this gets me excited for whatever the next commander release is going to be if I had a wish list you know I, 
I hope that by December we get a new set of cavalry commanders I think cavalry really needs something awesome uh and I think they need it soon and so for me you know if if the developers wanted to see what my wish list is I would look towards some of my favorite commanders that are already in the game historically my favorite commanders so far have been Guan Yu because of his AoE silence and massive damage Nevsky because of his really nice debuff and his he has a very balanced distribution of stats plus a ton of skill damage makes him feel awesome I love YSG the five target circular AoE it's classic it's incredible CPO feels like the first infantry commander that took things to a new level I'll always have a special place in my heart for CPO and the original CPO is Alexander the Great I love his instant proc damage I love his support of nature and I love how fast he is and so all of these commanders pretty much are infantry commanders and Liu Che honestly is quickly moving up my list of favorite commanders in the game and now that I think about it all the commanders that I just mentioned at one point either are still meta or at one point were meta like YSG even he is still used to this day so the next commander release whatever it actually will be I hope that it's cavalry and I hope that it follows some of the trends that maybe some of these commanders that I've already talked about follow as well because these are definitely some of my favorites when it comes to design by the way I feel like Harold is one of the coolest designs he's just so different he's just this big he's like a jolly looking Viking but on the battlefield when you see the axes flying like crazy like man I wish we had I wish we had a Harold 2.0 I just want to see an enraged Viking on the battlefield once again and maybe we're gonna get that with Ragnar Prime that's coming right down the uh right down the pipeline I don't know when this video is going to go live but it might we might have already seen some more information about that by the time this goes up so anyway those are some of my favorite commanders and hopefully the next release uh is going to follow some of the trends of those that I've just mentioned anyway guys with that being said that's why I've been playing rise of kingdoms for six years and I would love to know what keeps you guys playing rise of kingdoms I want to know in the comment section below and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton of helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and it'll let me know that you like these types of videos where I just talk passionately about the game and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video anyway with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace